Everybody seems to be telling you, upgrade to the new iPad. Although there are a couple people saying, no, don't upgrade to the new iPad. Uh, I'm square in the middle, as I was the day that they announced the new features uh, for uh, the iPad. The new iPad. It's always going to be the new iPad when a new iPad comes out. Uh, yes, uh, I, I do not regret upgrading to the new iPad. Uh, and people asked, well, why? Why sh should uh, I upgrade from uh, my iPad 2, say, uh, the last generation iPad, second generation, to the new iPad? And I tell them pretty much uh, straight away, uh, it's all about the screen. Everything else is just a bonus to me. I mean, the 4G connection, you might use it, you might not use it. Uh, a higher quality camera, uh, sure, that's, that's nice as well. Uh, a speed bump, of course, in graphic processing to uh, basically support the retina display on the iPad. But it all comes back to me. It all comes back to that screen. It's all about the screen. And some people can't even tell the difference between the iPad 2 screen and uh, the new iPad screen. So I wanted to just you know, throw this out there. We've got a story on uh, LockerGnome.com written by Matt Ryan who has an iPad 2. And, and this story, five reasons not to buy the new iPad. Uh, number one. You already own one. If you're happy with the first-gen iPad and you don't need a camera and you really can't see the difference between the new iPad screen and the old one, you wouldn't need to upgrade. Even if you have an iPad 2, uh, upgrading to a new iPad, not really terribly compelling. And I said that even uh, during the live uh, announcements from Apple. Uh, big upgrades often follow minor ones. So you may be staying uh, tuned uh, for another year Hold on to your iPad 2, upgrade to the fourth generation iPad when they likely will release it uh, in uh, 2013, assuming we make it that far because what the world's supposed to end on in December 2012. Hopefully we'll see a new iPad other than the new iPad, I guess a new new iPad. So uh, bigger things may be coming around the corner, although I wonder what they're going to put into the, the next iPad. Better battery life, uh, possibly mitigate some of the heat. Uh, that they they've experienced by having you know such pretty much a, a screen that has a higher resolution than HD TVs uh, that that are out there and many uh, portable computers or tablet computers in the field a high 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 super high resolution and a, a graphics uh, processor to accompany it um, alternatives there are uh, Android tablets and you know whether they're running a, a last or previous generation version of the platform or a previous, previous generation of the platform uh, worth looking into or possibly staying tuned for a Windows 8 tablet if you want to stay in the world of Windows. I will likely get uh, a Windows 8 tablet. I don't know which one, um, but I got to tell you that the Metro thing is, is, is a very interesting experience on a touch screen. Uh, and I've said that before. It's when you pop into Arrow, it's a bit jarring. So I'm hoping Microsoft will uh, eliminate that uh, before they, they ship a final version of Windows 8. Uh, I, I don't ever want to see the classic Windows desktop on uh, a touchscreen computer. Ever. Uh, so uh, I, I'd get a Windows 8 tablet PC, and I'd, I will likely recommend it along uh, with uh, uh, an Apple product. Um, Android tablets. My biggest beef with Android tablets right now, and really Android smartphones or the Android platform, is they have not yet addressed uh, the UI CPU priority bug. And what that means is when something like a graphic renders on the screen, sometimes it, it kind of is jarring. Uh, it's not smooth. Uh, it's it's kind of it's, it's jarring. It's not very smooth. The reason why Apple's graphics are smooth on their touchscreen devices is because they give the UI the rendering process, CPU priority. So everything runs smooth. And then every, everything else falls in after the UI. Android hasn't done that from the ground up. So once they change that in the platform, then apps have to be re-optimized for that architecture. I'm assuming Google's going to do that at some point because it, it, despite having fast uh, Android uh, hardware platforms, they're still crippled by uh, the UI oversights that they've made specifically in the way the, uh, uh, it's, it, the, way the processes are handled. Um, maybe you don't need a tablet. Maybe you don't need one yet. Maybe your smartphone will suffice. Maybe you don't even want anything that you touch. I think you're missing out on something, whether it's an Android tablet, uh, whether it's a Windows 8 tablet, uh, whether it's an Apple tablet. Uh, they're kind of fun to play with. Uh, we had a conversation with my dad the other day by way of FaceTime, pretty easy to uh, run on iOS. Pulled him in on this particular new iPad, and uh, it was clean. It was easy. It was fun. 
try a tablet. If you haven't, just try one. Try try more than one. And you may end up being a convert, whatever platform you go with. Plus, the old ones are cheaper. Why buy new ones? You can buy a last generation, previous generation, whatever you want to call it, for $100 less brand new. Or get a, a refurb model. Uh, you know, I returned one of my new iPads, and I, I hardly even touched it. it. It'll be labeled a refurb. They'll resell it at a lower price, but it's not damaged. Nothing was wrong with it. I hardly used it. I returned it to get a different version of the iPad, at least in terms of the hardware. So you can save a lot of money, even on new generation uh, devices, if you go with a refurb or a, a used model. So there's a lot of options why you would not want to buy a new iPad. Don't feel bad at all. Uh, you know, iPads aren't for everybody. New iPads definitely aren't for everybody. Uh, I, I think more than anything, uh, just don't think you have to have the latest and greatest to have a great experience. Take a look at the story.